We looked at a global false church, which the book of Revelation discusses. Are we seeing the rise of a global false church, ecumenicalism? Yeah. We looked at a one world religion that fits with a global false church, really, right? Pantheism, the worship of nature, spiritualism, um, the idea that man is God and man is a part of God. Pantheism, all is God. Panentheism, God is in all. We looked at a one world economy, a one world government, a glo the global partnerships between government and big business or the public private partnerships, the rise of occultism, Wicca religion, the witchcraft religion, that's part of the occultic religious system rising, uh, a one world leader, a false prophet, global surveillance system, the persecution of believers, uh, global catastrophes, increase in demonic activity, the eyes of the world on Israel, a, rebu a rebuilt and activated Jewish temple, the return of the Lord in judgment and triumph, and the millennial reign of Christ. These were just some of the items we looked at to reveal the relevance of Revelation. And uh, tonight, I want to look at this. Tonight, I want to look at lesson two, the rewards. The rewards of Revelation. Why should we study the book of Revelation? Why should we study this book? And you know, a lot of people, a lot of pastors will not study this book. I think I shared with you last week, sitting at a dinner table uh, in Branson, Missouri, before one of my Worldview weekends there a few years ago, and two guys were sitting there, and both of them were my, some of my speakers. Neither one of them speaks for me anymore. I wouldn't have them anymore. Not only because are they into hyper-Calvinism and its false gospel, uh, but as they sat there at the dinner table, uh, and I'm their host, paid for their meal and their flight in there and their hotel and their honorarium, let them sell their products. And here they sit at the dinner table discussing why they would never teach the book of Revelation to their church. Uh, and I'm like, are you guys trying to be disrespectful? You know that's a, an important topic to me. You know I have speakers at this very conference that will be speaking on that. But that's the way many of these hyper-Calvinists are. Um, many of them are educated beyond their intelligence. Uh, but again, if they if they cannot see through the false gospel they're promoting, I guess they probably don't have enough wherewithal spiritual eyes to understand the book of Revelation. But they sat there, and one of them was a pastor, and he was bemoaning those that teach Revelation and why he would never teach the book of Revelation to his congregation. And so, sadly, he and his congregation, they are missing out on the rewards of Revelation, because there is a special blessing that comes to those who seek to understand this book. And so that's what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to look at the rewards of Revelation. Why should we study the book of Revelation? What happens when we study the book of Revelation? And again, it's sad that many people don't want to do this. Well, let's go right away. By the way, I remember a pastor here in the Mid-South. He was teaching through the book of Revelation. And you know what happened? The attendance dropped. The attendance dropped on Sunday morning while he was teaching through the book of Revelation. Why? And I asked him, I said, why, why is the attendance dropping? And it was dropping among some of the older um, so-called senior saints in the church. Some of the senior saints would not attend on Sunday morning as this pastor was endeavoring to teach through the book of Revelation. And some of them came to him and said, oh, pastor, how much longer do we have before you'll be finished with that series so I can come back to church on Sunday morning? What? Why, why are you not attending church on Sunday morning? What, what, do you, you don't want to go through the book of Revelation? Oh, no, pastor. It's so scary. I just can't handle it, pastor. It's so scary. I, I just can't hear it. And that wasn't just one individual. There were several, and some of them were senior saints. Well, at least I pray they're senior saints. They claim to be. But that's not at all the way a true believer should think about the book of Revelation. In fact, did you know the book of Revelation, it says not to add to the word of God. The Bible says throughout several times not to add to the word of God. And if you take away from, and this is in Revelation as well, if you take away from the Bible by not reading that book, by not teaching that book, by discouraging some from studying it, I think you're taking away from the book, right? Well, there are even those, and I'll get into this in, in a later date, but reportedly even Martin Luther thought that the book of Revelation wasn't supposed to be part of the Bible. 
Wow. Hmm. But here is this pastor at a Baptist church in the Mid-South, and he told me the story himself personally. Senior citizens in the church saying, oh, I can't wait till you're done with the book of Revelation so I can return to church. I can't handle hearing about the book of Revelation. It's too scary. Well, that tells me there's a real spiritual problem going on there. It also tells me that they maybe they just don't understand what the book of Revelation is really all about. Because as you understand the book of Revelation, far from being a book that should cause you to be afraid, it should be fearful to the unbeliever. It should be a very fearful, apocalyptic book for the unbeliever. But for the believer, as we'll see tonight, no. The book of Revelation should be one that brings us comfort. I'll give you this real quick. It gives us comfort because we realize the things that are happening are not just happening by random chance. God is totally in control, wrote down in his word these things that would happen before they would happen, showing us the supernatural nature of God's word and that he is totally in control. Man, if you want to feel a despair, then believe that everything that's happening in the world is happening by random chance and that God has lost control. No, the world's not spinning out of control. Everything is falling right into place for the Bible to be fulfilled. And that should give people hope. Real believers should understand that. You know what else it does? It should cause us to have a, a desire for evangelism. And, you know, my friends, it should cause us to want to leave, to go home. There's many things the book of Revelation should cause us to do. But one of them is not to be afraid. As a believer, it should be far from that. It should give us hope and comfort that God is in control. And many of the things we see happening, God actually foretold that they were going to occur. So let's get underway tonight. Maybe a little overview, a little introduction there of what we're going to study. Let's go right away then. Why should we study the book of Revelation? Why should we study the book of Revelation? And what are the rewards? The rewards of Revelation when we study it. Well, number one, we should study the book of Revelation because all Scripture is profitable. You have those who say, well, I don't want to teach it. I don't want to teach it. Really, do they not believe all Scripture is profitable? Older folks and others of various ages as well may say, I don't want to hear it. It's too scary. Do they not believe it's profitable? Do they not believe what the Bible says? Well, number one, we should study it because all Scripture is profitable. Look at 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know what that word inspiration there means? God breathed. It's God breathed. You see, men wrote the word of God as the Holy Spirit inspired them. 